let's say hi to uh, Bruno. Hi, Bruno. Hello. Hi, Bruno. So, Bruno Catala, everyone, uh, you know Bruno Catala is a very famous uh, board game uh, designer. Look at his face. Oh, no, no. <laughs> But he is, and we all know you here in Israel. The format of the board game jam is uh, that we'll spend the day to develop games. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with this uh, format? Have you been already uh, participating? I still made, uh, I still had uh, one experience uh, in something like that. It was uh, a global game jam, uh, which is more connected to video games for, uh, for many, for, uh, for most designers, but it's also open to, uh, to board games. And so with my son and two friends, we went in this uh, global game jam and we, we made uh, a board game where everybody else was creating uh, video games. <laughs> ah. So it's interesting. Yeah. The global game jam in Israel is, uh, is the biggest global game jam in the world. Uh, we mm -hmm. have about uh, 400 developers in one location. We wanted to have our own, uh, our own thing. If I tell you Israel, do you have some people in mind? Um, yes, but I don't know their names. <laughs> I, yes, but I just know that uh, Cocktail Games uh, worked a lot uh, with uh, designers of Unanimo, if I'm... Mm -hmm. I'm yes. So, uh, so the only uh, Israeli game designers I know are, are them. Okay. So, I was knowing you, but I didn't knew that you were Israeli, in fact. <laughs> Yes, yes. I, 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 when we met in Essen, I thought you were French. <laughs> But I am French as well. I spent 20 years in France and 20 years in Israel. So, so for, for me, in fact, uh, the country where you are living doesn't matter. We all belong to the same family, gamers. I completely agree. I never had the opportunity to, to, to come to Israel. So you're welcome for uh, whenever you want. You have guides, you have friends, uh, you have... Uh, You have the red carpet for you. So you are co-authoring a lot of games, right? Yeah. So a game jam is also a lot of teamwork. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you see the complementarities between different authors working on the same game? First thing uh, I have to say that uh, it has been a choice since the beginning for me. Uh, you know, if you are speaking about writers, for example, uh, it's a... Uh, common thing to say that a writer uh, writes the same story all his life, always the same team, etc., etc. And I think that for a game designer, it's the same. That means that your brain, never mind what you want to do, uh, comes again and again in his comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So when I began to, to create games, uh, I didn't want to make one game. I wanted to become game designer and to stay in, in, in this market. And I immediately thought that the best way for me was not to stay alone. That's the reason why I like to make games I design alone and in parallel games I'm working with other designers. It's, it's the best way for me uh, to, to have the opportunity to explore uh, things that I would never have thought if I stayed alone, for example. Mm -hmm. It's not always easy because that means that you have to accept to cancel ideas you really like. And sometimes it's hard. And that's the reason why I think that the best way is to work with one co-designer, not in a big team, because there is no majority. That mm. means when we have a discussion, when we don't agree, we have the time to take time enough that we agree at one point, mm. okay? If we are free, Immediately, it's two against one. We have a majority. You don't have the time to, to abandon your ID, in fact. Mm -hmm. This is a very interesting point, and that's very relevant for, for today and for the, for the jam. You work a lot remotely as well? For sure, yes. Uh, in France, uh, distances are bigger than yours. <laughs> yes. And that means that you are working a lot um, by Skype with Skype sessions, etc., mm -hmm. And uh, then we each have our playtester groups. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to have playtesting with different groups and then to compare what happened. We just make a report and... Uh, mm, I understand. Do you think it's possible to win at uh, five tribes if you don't use the gods? 
for sure. <laughs> no, no, but five strikes. You have you have uh, many ways to to score points, and uh, I design uh, I balance the game in order that nothing is mandatory. For example, I won many times without any camel on the board. I I won many times without any yellow meat. <laughs> yeah? yeah, I won many times we were without any green cards, <laughs> without any resources. So. It's just a question of looking what is possible, what are doing the, your opponents, and find your own way to be better than them. It's a kind of game in which you cannot decide before the beginning of a game that you will uh, take that or that strategy. And that's also exactly what I wanted to, to put in that game, because I prefer uh, to call the uh, adaptability capacity of a player than having learned slowly the best way to win. <laughs> When you have a prototype, you like it to be polished, to look like final, or do you, are you like able to start showing a game that is just a piece of papers? The, the most important is that you immediately get the information you, you need to be able to play. And the ergonomy is really important. That means that since the beginning of my prototypes, I, I take care of that. Mm -hmm. It has not to be nice. It has to be efficient mm -hmm. for, for your decisions. Because, you know, a very hard, a very difficult, a very big, deep, difficult game can seem very easy if you have worked on the good way in that field. For example, if you take a, a game like Scythe, for example, wow. Scythe is not It's a complicated game, but the ergonomy makes it simple. And you can, you can have exactly the opposite. You, are, can, you can have very simple games, which seems very hard to master just because you don't find the information easily. So that means that the game, in, in my opinion, since the beginning of the prototype, we have to take care of that. Where are the good information that people need to be able to take the decision? At the early stages of a prototype, I don't take big care about uh, illustrations, things like that, etc. If your prototype is too close to something which could be just published, they can't imagine it another way. That means that they have not the opportunity to imagine it in their own uh, um, line, in fact. You can have less chances to be published if you come with something which seems to finished, in fact. You have to take your time in really balancing your game and mechanism, not to take your time to spend your time in something that, is, that belongs to the publisher, in fact. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say something to the Tel Aviv crowd? <laughs> I want to say hello, <laughs> and uh, yes, I will be very happy to 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 have an opportunity one day to to meet them <laughs> on a f on a festival in Europe or, or never mind somewhere in Israel one day. Maybe so if you come, to person, don't don't hesitate to to come to me and say hello, and you will never disturb me. In fact, <laughs> thank you so much for your availability. Uh, we like you very much here, and we are very happy to have you among us today. And thank you for your kind words. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you.